I just finished playing the wildest game of Race for the Galaxy that I've done in a while. Come with me today and check out this excellent and crazy win here on Legendary Tactics. So I just finished up uh, quite a game of uh, Race for the Galaxy against the hard AI. And uh, it was uh, quite a noteworthy uh, uh, experience. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to share this one up and I'm going to uh, walk through a great example of uh, one potential way to uh, battle it out and have a, a military uh, uh, experience here on Legendary Tactics. So... Uh, I started out with New Sparta, of course, it's uh, two uh, military points and uh, pretty solid. Uh, now I didn't have a lot in hand of the, uh, of, I had the uh, the lost alien warship and I had re a replicant war uh, robots that I was kind of looking to get on the board. Uh, replicant war uh, robots could actually like lead to um, other potential uh, avenues of, of, of laying down colonies that were, were are non-military. Uh, non, uh, so I did do a draw there and uh, picked up and uh, enough cards to be able to lay down replicant robots. Now my real dilemma was that the alien Rosetta Stone world would pair beautifully with the lost warship, uh, and I was I, I, real struggle here as to uh, whether I wanted to keep that and then uh, and then sort of power play towards getting the lost uh, alien warship down. In the end, I thought that the uh, the Star Nomad Lair would actually be a better play because that way, um, what I what my plan is it was to uh, drop that next turn and then quickly do a card draw with some uh, uh, excellent card bonus as well uh, attached to that uh, to the uh, to the Star uh, Nomad Lair there. So right away we we're able to get that one down, and of course the uh, Hard AI was able to drop a, a Green World, which I'm not thrilled about, but. Uh, Picking up a few more cards there. I was able to, and oh, and look at that. Outlaw World also came into hand, so that is not bad. Oh, along with some great military um, boosting uh, settlements there. That's awesome. I've got Space Marines. I've got Drop Ships, so I've got some really good uh, power cards there to help uh, bolster up the military strength of my hand. Uh, new military tactics there looked interesting to me. I, I debated keeping it in the end. Uh, I thought I'd ditch it um, and just uh, we we had a, a lot of other settlements there. I wanted to get uh, bumped up, so uh, or sorry, I develop developments. I wanted to get bumped up, so we're gonna drop in uh, the Space Marines right away, right off the hop. Uh, we'll get I uh, get our strength up to four. Um, I, I do have the Outlaw World, and, and I've got that uh, the drop ships that I'm gonna be able to uh, sort of utilize and uh, bring into effect there. I also have the Deserted Alien Outpost. I thought, you know what? Do a little card draw here. Now, I did get rid of the Outlaw World uh, to sacrifice for that, uh, the yellow card draw, but um, when you're talking, uh, you know, a nice five cards to the hand, uh, worth at some point here, especially because dropships can come down no problem and actually really help bolster the uh, military. Oh, uh, and look at that for military uh, worlds there. We've got the for former penal colony. We've got pirate world. And of course, we have, we have in hand the lost alien warship. So we are looking pretty solid here. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bolster up my... my uh, my world's here right now, so I'm going to throw in the uh, the former penal colony for, uh, gives me another plus one. I can drop the uh, lost alien warship in there as well. Pirate world still in hand, of course. Dropship still there as an option. Uh, I got a lot of free worlds now I can just plonk right down. But I am cognizant of the fact that I uh, have more than half my tableau already full, so I'm going to be very mindful of that. Uh, the victory point uh, counter at 22 in the pot, I'm not worried about really. Uh, it's tied 14-14, so we're kind of going back and forth here. But look at that, 10 military strength. Wow, that is a high, high level. Uh, not the highest I've done ever, but uh, pretty solid. My real dilemma here is that I've got really crummy worlds in hand, all really low scoring one to two point hands, even though they're free to get down. Uh, I was debating a uh, power play to get there, but you can see uh, the AI is going to be powering ahead with uh, some serious VP points. I am not going to be able to keep up if I drop those worlds down, so I've got to go a bit of fishing here. Uh, I'm going to go for drop one world down. Uh, he's nowhere near completing his tableau. He's not getting 16 points this round, so I'll throw in the mining world there. I'm going to uh, be able to get um, two points for that. I am... 
stand behind. I just want to make sure the one that I drop, I'm going to get rid of that uh, the green world. And uh, be, be able to pick up five cards here. So that'll really help bolster my hand. There is going to be a bit of a, he's going to be jumping ahead in points. There's no way around it. And currently I'm looking kind of dead in the water here. And, uh, okay, so Merchant Guild, ugh, not bad, not great, but it's going to catch me up a little bit. Um, could be, kind of, I'm kind of thinking do a power play with Merchant Guild and then see what happens on, uh, on what cards either come up or what cards, oh, okay, so he's doing a little explore here. Oh, and there it is, New Galactic Order, a 12 banger. Okay, so that's a... Uh, that is like the most perfect card that could have come into my my deck. Uh, that's a game changer right there. And sometimes uh, you just need that kind of that kind of uh, magic to happen in that last draw. Game's winding down here, and I'm jumping up by 12 points here, and I'm taking a lead. Um, now it's the question: Is can I hold off? Can I hold off the steamroll of his VP power here? So we've got one round left. He's got two cards in play. Uh, he's got 32, I'm at 30. I'm still in a bit of trouble here, quite honestly, because I am going to fill my tableau if I put anything down this round. So I'm debating, do I go with two worlds? Uh, that uh, that brown world there, the uh, Arnett's world, is going to actually be able to get me uh, three VP. It's going to chisel me closer. He's got eight cards in hand, though, so he is clearly going to be dropping something down. So I've got to be worried about that as well. Uh, four VPs in hand. He may try to go power play on the VPs, drain the pool. Uh, he may try to uh, just stack it a bit. Oh, and look at that. Okay, so he's going to do an explore, and then we're going to be dropping a development. Oh, and the excellent. The outpost just came into hand there. That is a six-point swing for me. So that is substantial. Um, an excellent, excellent draw again. So I've gotten extremely fortunate on two draws now, but sometimes, again... Race for the Galaxy, it's about drawing w drawing well at the right times of the game. And uh, there's that Rebel Outpost dropping it down for a six points. It's going to be pretty tight here. Unfortunately, I didn't have any developments I could drop, but uh, 37, 36 for uh, AI. I've got that uh, Arnett's World. We're going to drop that one down for three more VP. Uh, is it enough? It, it looks like it's a tie. Looks like it's a tie. We're coming down to the tiebreaker. Uh, it could be a tiebreaker here. And I am just doing some quick math. He's got zero cards in hand. He's got two worlds covered right now. I believe I had four in hand. And I believe that I had a couple worlds covered. So that should have been enough to bump me over the top. It was. There it is. So the score on the tiebreaker. That was a real tight game. Pulled it out by the skin of my teeth. Uh, a lot of fun. Just another reason that I absolutely love playing this game of Race for the Galaxy. Sometimes it just comes down to the wire. Uh, you think you think you're you're sunk, you're dead in the water, and then just a great card draw can just totally redeem you. So just taking a quick peek over my cards here. There, I had four in hand. I had four worlds that were uh, uh, currently wi uh, with uh, with cards on them there that were populated. So that was great. Uh, look at that. Well, military strength 14. Now, I'm taking a quick peek at the uh, the AI's hand here. Uh, zero cards in hand. Only two two worlds covered. He had new colony for eight as a development there. Um, he would drop down. He had some really good um, uh, generation of uh, point uh, getting, but overall, in the end, uh, the tie goes to Cax in this one. So, uh, Anyway, hope you enjoyed that little uh, battle of military uh, strength. And uh, thanks for watching. This has been Legendary Tactics.